in San Francisco, we also interviewed the Nate, uh, the Nate Ringerman. He's the co-founder of the, I think, one of the biggest platforms in the world, uh, Indiegogo, a crowdfunding platform. Uh, in his, uh, you can check the whole interview uh, at our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Crowdex Edition. And now I'm giving my analysis uh, about uh, the interview. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, four things. Uh, first, how we got there. It's, it's, it's a nice story. Then about the story and leadership of Indiegogo. Uh, then about their international strategy and uh, final, uh, the future of Indiegogo and about crowdfunding uh, overall. Uh, first, <clears throat> how we got there, I think it's also a nice story uh, for people who didn't know it already, because uh, we are over here based in Utrecht in the Netherlands and uh, she's based in San Francisco in the US. Um, and normally when you want to talk to a founder or a co-founder, then you call the PR department and they are thinking, okay, uh, CNN Martijn and then CNN wins, story, story of course, but when you get the attention of the co-founder or the founder, him or herself, uh, then, it's, and then an appointment is arranged uh, really easily. So what I did was not calling the PR department, but what I did was uh, I recorded a video uh, message to, uh, to the founders of Indiegogo, where I said, okay, I want to have an interview with you. I'm based in Netherlands, you're based in San Francisco. Of course, it's crazy to get to you for an interview, but hey, why not? So I have a, pro a proposal for you. Uh, give me uh, one half hour of your time, and then I will uh, fund the cost to get to you by using your own platform. So do we, uh, by using a social media campaign, we uh, got this message to the founder, but also to the whole company of Indiegogo, and then in about one and a half hours, they say, cool, uh, let's do it. So, and it's also typical about crowdfunding, uh, so because in the end, we raised about, I think, two and a half thousand euro to get to San Francisco, and of course, we needed the money, but most important was getting the appointments, and it's also typical for crowdfunding that you can reach much more goals uh, uh, for your idea or business than only the money part. So also, what they say in the interview, most of the parts uh, of, of with most of the campaigns, the money is the the, the the third or the fourth priority of the value that the people are getting out of their uh, crowdfunding campaign. So also market research, building up a crowd, uh, support is really important uh, value that you create doing a crowdfunding campaign. Uh, about the story of Indiegogo and about their leadership, um, and also about I also see it with a different other initiative we interviewed in San Francisco. They got a really a deep, intrinsic, motivated uh, uh, feeling to fix something that doesn't work. Uh, in the case of Dene, her parents they were both entrepreneurs. They couldn't grow because they couldn't get a loan, and so they didn't have ask. They, they didn't have access to, uh, to to capital, and <clears throat> that was bothering her. And that made her uh, think about idea. Okay, how can I give people with a good idea access to uh, to, to capital? And uh, then also some serendipity happened because she had a good idea, but then she met two other people who were having the same idea, but they got different skills. And together uh, they came up with the idea of Indiegogo and built also the company. Um, and what I say, okay, the financial industry is really in, uh, inefficient. There are some gatekeepers between you and the capital, and uh, they're doing a, a bad job. So let's build a platform to, to arrange that. Uh, and in the end, um, um, also interesting because uh, by developing the process of Indiegogo, they also changes the way uh, they want to do the platform. So it's also a really nice entrepreneurial lesson. Uh, of course, you have, can have a good idea and think, okay, I'm going to do this, but also be open in the path by realizing uh, uh, by getting your idea that you also sometimes uh, have to change it and sometimes it's also good to change. Um, and also it was nice to hear that uh, they have talked about about 90 investors, they had 90 times a no, but a no that gives them more motivation to, to work even harder to, to reach their goal uh, and to also a confirmation that they are uh, at, the right, uh, at, at, at the right track. Um, their dream is to uh, democratize democratize access to capital and to empower anyone to fund what matters to them or whatever it is. And working from these interesting dreams uh, is also uh, really typical about these kind of, uh, of com companies. They're really value driven. And also when I ask her, okay, and, and when you got hired, uh, when you started hiring people, uh, how did you know, knew that you were going to hire the right people? And that was also the answer <clears throat> about their values. So uh, they started by uh, asking to everybody who was working over there, okay, what takes you to get out of bed 
to get to here and work for Indiegogo, and that was also the core of their values. So it's really a, 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 a intrinsic a value-driven company. Um, about the in, uh, international strategy, um, I asked them, okay, uh, of I asked her, um, when are you going to, to launch in the Netherlands, or, or since when did you launch in the Netherlands? And she said, okay, uh, we already launched in the Netherlands from day one, because from day one we had a global uh, uh, payment system, so everybody in the world could start a campaign on Indiegogo. And I think that's also where they uh, missed some marketing change, because like Kickstarter, they uh, were introduced in the Netherlands or for Dutch projects in 2014, and every newspaper was writing about it, uh, uh, but nobody was saying, okay, but hey, <laughs> 2014, Indiegogo is here already for some years. So, and uh, the approach of, of Indiegogo and Kickstarter is the same uh, uh, by entering the Netherlands. Uh, so, that uh, would be a missed opportunity for, for them. Um, they're always they also now hiring local people for support, and that's also the the, the bridge between the online platform and the real uh, the real life world. I think it's really really important. Um, and more about uh, their global strategy, um, they now have a, they're now using a global payment system. Um, I think they have to change it a little bit because, like, also I did my own campaign on Indiegogo to finance the cost to fly to together with Sebastian to San Francisco. And the only way that you could pay at the platform are with credit card or PayPal. But in Netherlands, everybody is is uh, is paying with Ideal. So uh, I got lost on lots of people who want to donate, but they couldn't donate because they weren't using a credit card or or, or they weren't using PayPal. So it's also it's, it's nice to think global. But in the end, you also have to look at how can you lower the thresholds for local people also to uh, to tap in. So I hope they will change it also uh, in uh, the future. Talking about the future, about Indiegogo and, and crowdfunding, um, they started with the ambitions to start an equity-based crowdfunding platform that wasn't allowed by then, 2006, uh, in the US. It isn't allowed right now, they are working on it. Um, so then it changed to the purse and donation model. Uh, they still have the ambition to also, in the future, start with equity. Uh, I was first quite surprised about that, about, uh, about four reasons. Uh, first, uh, they're now funding many creative projects. And then you can ask, okay, why do you as a creative project want to uh, fund by using equity-based crowdfunding? Uh, I use equity-based crowdfunding myself to, uh, for the translation and print of my brand exhibition book into English. And looking back at that, the, 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 the decision of equity-based crowdfunding was, was quite crazy because why using equity-based crowdfunding when people are giving money because they want to have the book or if they want to just donate to make it happen. Um, the second, uh, skilled investors, uh, lots of people who are investing in crowdfunding, they are investing uh, one till, let's say, 100 euro or dollar. So there are small amounts of money and those people, they are not skilled investors, so they don't have any idea what they're buying when they are going to into the equity-based crowdfunding. Uh, the third, uh, they're now really a market leader uh, or one of the market leaders in their niche uh, and there are other really big crowdfunding platforms, especially also in uh, the loan crowdfunding. Um, so uh, I was thinking, okay, stay with your core and uh, don't go in the equity-based crowdfunding was my first response. I will later share what is my uh, second response in that. Uh, and uh, fourth, a scalable model, uh, because running a, 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 um, a donation and a, a perk-based crowdfunding, crowdfunding platform, it's, it's, it's quite easy to scale, uh, because there are not so many regulations, there are quite some, but it's, it's, it's acceptable, uh, acceptable uh, the amount of regulation that you have to face with. Uh, when you go to equity-based crowdfunding, there are so many more, especially also local uh, regulations that you have to deal with. Um, so I think it's 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 interesting decision. Um, but talking to Dene, uh, she also su surprised me with her answer. So Dene, thank you for that. Because forced uh, about the creative projects, uh, so why start equity based crowdfunding? Uh, what you say? Okay, we're going to we uh, our our main goal is to democratize uh, access to capital. So every uh, so they can empower everybody to uh, fund what matters they want, uh, uh, whatever it is. And uh, of course, the equity part and also especially more the startup part is also really important um, uh, a way of people to realize their dreams and to get access to capital. So that's a good good answer on that. Uh, second, uh, about the skilled investors, uh, I was thinking about, okay, 
these poor investors, they are not skilled enough to uh, invest in equity-based crowdfunding. And she said, okay, but it, it, it's also really logical because they're, they're not sk uh, skilled investors because they were uh, locked out of the system because they're not investing lots of money uh, uh, in companies or in this case in crowdfunding. So they're really focusing on education. So I think that, that's really important, also really important role of the platforms to educate your investors in what's, what's, uh, what they're buying and also uh, educate them about the risk and about the possibilities. Um, and about the scalable module uh, regulation, yeah, they're now about 60% of their market is in the in US. So when they have the equity-based part uh, working in the US, uh, that, will be, uh, that will give them quite some opportunities. So uh, by growing in the US, I think the equity-based will be really uh, promising, uh, but I still think it's quite a challenge when you also want to, to run it globally, but I think they will uh, we'll weather that also. Um, and basically on the future of crowdfunding, so when will crowdfunding be really successful in the future? I think when crowdfunding will be uh, part of our everyday lives. Uh, last week I had a meeting with Sebastian, uh, uh, and he said, okay, for me, uh, buying gadgets uh, on a crowdfunding platform is, feels more familiar than buying gadgets uh, in a store. And I think the only way that crowdfunding will be really, really big is when for every peop person in the world, crowdfunding is just a part of their daily life. So I'm looking forward uh, to that.